Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering question number six from the M1 Mechanics M1 January 2022 um, <coughs> International A Level Ed Excel paper. And this question is about vectors. It says in this question, I and J are horizontal unit vectors. Okay, so <coughs> a particle P of mass two kilograms moves under the constant action of two forces. So you have one force, which I'll call F1, which is P, I, and Q, J. So I'll write it in the column vector form. And then you have F2, the second force, which is given as 2, Q, I. So I'll write it again as column vector, so 2, Q, I, and P, J. Those are the two forces where P and Q are constants. It says, given that the acceleration is I minus J, so the acceleration is 1 minus 1, 1 I minus 1 J, meters per second squared, uh, find the value of P and the value of Q. And we know that the mass of this object is 2 kilograms. Okay, so now what I know is that the, um, I know that F is equal to MA. So the resultant force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. All right, so we know the mass, we know the acceleration, and we can find an expression for the resultant force. The resultant force is when I add these two together. So the resultant force is going to be F1 plus F2, which is P plus 2Q and Q plus P, which I'll write as P plus Q to make it more simple. Okay, P plus Q. Why? Because the resultant force is the two forces, is the resultant of those two forces added together. Those are the two forces acting in. So I just added these two, two forces together, P plus 2Q and Q plus P, which I wrote as P plus Q there, same thing. Now, that's the resultant force. We know the mass is 2 kilograms, and the acceleration is 1 minus 1. So if I put that together, I can say that P plus 2Q and P plus Q, that's the I and J components of the resultant force, is equal to the mass, which is 2, times acceleration, which is 1 minus 1, which leads us to two equations, which are P plus Q, P plus 2Q, sorry, is equal to 2, because that's going to be 2 times 1, which is 2, and P plus Q is going to equal minus 2. So I have these two equations, which I can now solve simultaneously. Let's call that equation 1 and equation 2. If I subtract these equations, I will eliminate the P's. So if I do, for example, equation 1, take away equation 2, then I'll have 2Q minus Q, which is Q, equals and 2 minus minus 2, which is 2 plus 2, which is 4. And then I can say that, therefore, because uh, I've got P plus Q is equal to negative 2. I know Q is 4, so P plus 4 is negative 2. Therefore, P is equal to negative 2. Take away 4, which is negative 6. So I have my values of P and Q here. P is negative 6 and Q is 4. So that is the value of P and Q in this problem. Okay, so there's the answer to part A. Now we're going to move on to part B. Now it says find the size of the angle between the direction of the acceleration and the vector j. Now this is the acceleration which they were given we were given in the first question. So the j is like vertically it's like up. All right, you can say north you could say if you want to. And um we know that this vector i minus j if if, if it starts from this point over here then it goes one unit to the right and one unit down. So it's going to look something like this. You go one unit to the right and one unit down. Okay, which basically will be something that looks like this in this direction here. Okay, so this vector will be something that's like this. That is the vector that we're talking about. This is the acceleration. Okay, A, which is 1 minus 1. That's A. Okay, so A is equal to 1 minus 1. So 1 to the right, 1 down. So this obviously is a 90 degrees. And this is 1 this way, and this is 1 that way. So this is basically an isosceles triangle. So this angle is going to be 45 degrees here, for sure. Right, and this is the direction of vector J. So the angle that we want, I'll just draw it here. Let's call that theta. So that's going to be 90 plus 45. So theta is 90 degrees plus 45 degrees. So what we're looking for is 135 
degrees. That's the angle that we're looking for, the direction between j and our vector 1 minus 1. We could also have found this using tangent if we wanted to. We could say the tangent of the angle, let's call it x, the tangent of x is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is 1 over 1, sorry. So x is going to be 45 degrees, inverse tan of 1 is 45, and then we could have added to 90 to give us that value. But because we know this is the same distance this way as it is that way, this is, it makes this an isosceles triangle. If that's a right angle, then these two must also add up to 90, so they must be the same value as well, because isosceles triangles, these two angles are the same. So this must be 45 and therefore that must be 90 plus 45, which is 135 degrees. Okay, that's pretty simple. The size of the angle between the direction of the acceleration and the vector j. Okay, so there's part b. Now for part c. It says at time, time, time t, uh, t equals 0, the velocity of p is 3i minus 4j. Um, at time equals t seconds, p is moving in the direction of vector 11i minus 13j. Find the value of t. So this is going with a constant acceleration, which is 1 minus 1, as we know. They told us that in the first part of the question. So 1 minus 1 is a constant acceleration. And as is constant acceleration, we can use the SUVA equations. And the one that's going to obviously apply here is V equals U plus A times T. Now in this case, we know what U is. At time equals 0, the initial uh, time, uh, the, the velocity of P is 3 minus 4. So this is 3 minus 4. That's the initial um, velocity of this particle. We know the acceleration is 1 minus 1. Okay, now I know that the final velocity is in the direction of this vector, but it's, it's not the same value as this vector, but if it's in the same direction of this vector, it's going to be some multiple of that, some multiple of that. So if I write here, velocity is k times 11 i minus 13 j so i know that the velocity is going to be some multiple of this or some fraction of this it's going to be something times 11 minus 13 it's in the same direction as this but the magnitude we don't know so we write we can write it like this and for us the time we have to write it as capital t that's the time at which we have to find um we have to find that time so we can now stick this into this equation so v is going to be k times 11 negative 13 equals u which is 3 negative 4 plus a which is 1 minus 1 times t so it's going to be 1 minus 1 times the time so from this I can form two equations I can say 11k is equal to 3 plus t that's one equation and I can say negative 13k is equal to negative 4 minus t and that's equation 2 so if I solve these two equations simultaneously, I can find what t is. Now, what I want to do is elim eliminate the k's. But it looks like it's going to be a bit complicated to do this, to make k the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find what k is first. Because to eliminate the t's is very easy, because they have different signs and the same coefficient. So if I just add the two equations together, that will get rid of the t's. I can find what k is, which I don't actually need, but... I can use that value of k to find what t is because it's easier instead of otherwise I have to make the coefficients the same of k which is a bit complicated multiplying by 13 and 11 so I'll just add the two equations together I have 11k minus plus minus 13k which is minus 2k equals 3 um, plus minus 4 which is minus 1 so therefore k is equal to 1 over 2 so if k is equal to 1 over 2 if I take equation 1 it looks a bit easier I'll have if I substitute that into equation 1, I have 11 times a half equals 3 plus t. So that's 11 over 2 minus 3 equals t. Therefore, that's going to be t equals, that's 5.5 minus 3. So t is going to be 2.5. So t is 2.5. Um, that's the value of t. t seconds. We don't have to write seconds because that t is here. So that's t is equal to 2.5. So that's the answer to that question part C. All right. So the important thing is to realize that the velocity is not 11 minus 13, but it's something times 11 negative 13, because it says it's moving in the direction of this vector. Okay. So the velocity is always um, 
you know, has a magnitude and a direction. Now we know the direction of the velocity at that time, but we don't know the magnitude of the velocity. So we know it's going to be some multiple times. And that's the key here to not making a mistake in this question. Some multiple of this direction is the velocity. Uh, and then we can form two equations and find what the value of t is. And that answers part C of question number six. Okay. Um, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that should appear in this area. Other questions from um, this topic of vectors can be found in this playlist over here from M1. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And on the top of the page, you'll see a card taking you to some other paper you might be interested in watching. Thank you for watching and see you soon.